step into the rugged and gripping world of the 1959 film Rio Bravo. This classic Hollywood Western, directed by Howard Hawks, unfolds a tale of justice, loyalty, and resilience in the face of adversity. Starring the iconic John Wayne, Dean Martin, and Ricky Nelson, the story takes place in a small Texas town under the looming threat of a powerful rancher. What sets this movie apart are the enduring qualities that make it an everlasting symbol of the industry. Is it the raw charisma of John Wayne, the masterful direction of Howard Hawks, or perhaps the gripping storyline? As you watch, keep an eye out for the funny, shocking, and even sad facts that pepper the narrative, adding depth to this Western masterpiece. Amidst the dust and gun smoke, classic Hollywood actors deliver standout performances, each contributing to the film's timeless appeal. Who was your favorite? Share your thoughts and preferences in the comments below. Before you go, we're curious what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this classic? Share your stories and memories. So keep watching for the surprising twists and turns and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Your experience might just be the missing piece in someone else's puzzle. Stay tuned for more insights and anecdotes. And remember, we're all ears for your Rio Bravo tales. Happy watching. Rio Bravo, released in 1959, carved a lasting niche in cinematic history, resonating with audiences and leaving an enduring impact on popular culture. Directed by Howard Hawks, the film was met with critical acclaim during its time, praised for its gripping narrative, compelling characters, and masterful cinematography. The movie's reception was a testament to its ability to captivate audiences, solidifying its status as a classic within the Western genre. It not only showcased the talents of its cast, led by John Wayne, but also demonstrated Hawke's directorial prowess. The chemistry among the characters, particularly between Wayne and Dean Martin, contributed to the film's widespread appeal. Beyond its immediate success, the film spawned a legacy that extended far beyond the silver screen. It inspired a series of spin-offs and adaptations, showcasing its enduring influence on the entertainment industry. Various television shows drew inspiration from its narrative, paying homage to the thematic depth and character dynamics. The impact of this cinematic milestone also transcended the screen into the realm of merchandise. The characters became iconic, leading to the creation of a range of products, from action figures to apparel, reflecting the enduring popularity of the film. Moreover, the movie's narrative and characters influenced subsequent westerns, shaping the conventions of the genre for years to come. Filmmakers drew inspiration from its storytelling techniques and character archetypes, cementing it as a touchstone for Western cinema. In conclusion, Rio Bravo stands as a cinematic milestone not only for its excellence during its release, but also for the indelible mark it left on popular culture. Its impact is evident in the array of spin-offs, merchandise, and adaptations that followed, ensuring its place in the annals of film history. Rio Bravo, a classic 1959 Western film, was brought to life through the collaboration of talented creators, producers, and directors. The film was directed by the renowned Howard Hawks, known for his mastery in various genres. Hawks, with his keen storytelling ability and distinctive style, played a pivotal role in shaping the movie's narrative. On the production front, Hawks teamed up with Jules Firthman and Lee Brackett, who skillfully crafted the screenplay. Their combined expertise contributed to the film's compelling plot and engaging dialogue, ensuring a seamless flow that captivated audiences. Turning to the cast, the film featured an ensemble of notable actors, each delivering memorable performances. John Wayne, an iconic figure in Western cinema, took on the role of the sheriff, bringing his trademark charisma and rugged charm to the character. Dean Martin, in a departure from his usual roles, portrayed Dude, the alcoholic deputy, showcasing his versatility as an actor. The casting process for Rio Bravo was not without its share of interesting trivia. Angie Dickinson, who portrayed Feathers, was chosen for her strong on-screen presence and chemistry with the rest of the cast. Ricky Nelson, primarily known as a teen idol, surprised audiences with his role as Colorado, showcasing his acting talent beyond his musical fame. In addition to the main cast, Walter Brennan's portrayal of Stumpy added a touch of humor and warmth to the film. The chemistry among the cast members was palpable, contributing to the film's success. In conclusion, Rio Bravo stands as a testament to the collaborative efforts of its creators, producers, and directors. 
The carefully selected cast, with each actor bringing their unique flair to their roles, played a crucial role in making the film a timeless classic in the Western genre. Rio Bravo left an indelible mark on cinema, its impact resonating beyond its 1959 release. Notably, it served as a blueprint for subsequent films such as El Dorado and Rio Lobo. In a fascinating turn of events, Dean Martin's agent orchestrated a memorable encounter with director Howard Hawks, ultimately securing Martin's role as the inebriated deputy dude. The film's success prompted Hawks and screenwriter Lee Brackett to rework its script for El Dorado, featuring a nearly identical narrative with Robert Mitchum assuming the role of the intoxicated deputy, now a sheriff. The cycle continued with Rio Lobo, where Hawks and Brackett made further tweaks, creating what could be considered the second remake. During filming, John Wayne, a constant presence in these adaptations, amusingly questioned the deja vu, wondering aloud, haven't we made this movie before? These cinematic iterations, interconnected in their essence, underscore the enduring influence of Rio Bravo on the Western genre. The seamless transitions between films and recurring cast members testify to the impact of this iconic work on subsequent creations. The legacy of Rio Bravo lives on in its thematic resonance and the cinematic journey it inspired. In 1959, John Wayne found himself at a crossroads in his career, marking a transition into middle age. At 51, he grappled with the realization that his days as a romantic lead were over. Following a string of unsuccessful films since The Searchers in 1956, Wayne opted to stick to the familiar John Wayne persona, believing it was the key to retaining audience interest. Filming Rio Bravo presented its own challenges. Outdoors, the cast and crew battled scorching 120-degree heat, enduring the relentless invasion of grasshoppers that sizzled on hot lights and cluttered the sets. Interestingly, Gary Cooper, a visitor to the set while filming The Hanging Tree nearby, dismissed the film as phony and lacking believability. This critique held particular weight considering that Rio Bravo was conceived as a response to Cooper's own film, High Noon. Both Wayne and director Howard Hawks rejected the idea that a true lawman would seek assistance in handling challenges as portrayed by Cooper's character in High Noon. These behind-the-scenes insights into Wayne's career choices and the practical hurdles faced during filming provide a nuanced perspective on the making of Rio Bravo. The film, crafted as a reaction to industry trends and artistic differences, stands as a testament to Wayne's determination and Hawks' vision in the ever-evolving landscape of cinema. In the late 1950s, the movie brought together an unprecedented ensemble of six actors prominently featured above the title, John Wayne, Dean Martin, Ricky Nelson, Angie Dickinson, Walter Brennan, and Ward Bond. This departure from the norm, where only Wayne's name typically took precedence, was a notable choice for the time. Crafted by Howard Hawks and John Wayne, the film served as a deliberate counter-response to the prevailing theme and perspective of High Noon. The decision to collaborate on Rio Bravo was a conscious divergence from the narrative style propagated by High Noon, with its emphasis on a lone lawman seeking assistance, a notion strongly rejected by both Wayne and Hawks. During filming, John Wayne's query to Howard Hawks, Dean Martin has all the fireworks. What am I supposed to be doing? Led to a crucial insight. Hawks, in response, suggested a role akin to watching over a friend battling alcoholism. Wayne, understanding the direction, nodded and declared, I know what to do. The film's distinctive ensemble, the deliberate departure from prevailing themes, and the nuanced approach to Wayne's character underscore Rio Bravo's unique position in the landscape of cinema. These elements, coupled with the onset insights into character dynamics, reveal the intentional choices made in the making of this classic western. Howard Hawks broke a four-year hiatus with his 1959 film, returning to the director's chair. Living in Europe during this break, he observed the rising popularity of character-driven Western TV shows. This insight inspired him to create a Western with multiple character storylines instead of a singular plot. Despite initial studio reluctance, the decision to cast John Wayne as the lead swiftly gained approval. Ricky Nelson's inclusion, despite Hawks' reservations about his age and weight, turned out to be a box office boon, adding an estimated $2 million to the film's success. Howard Hawks had initially limited Nelson's lines intentionally. Angie Dickinson secured her role based on Hawks' viewing of her performance in the case of The One-Eyed Witness. 
This casting choice added to the ensemble, contributing to the film's dynamic and character-driven narrative. In summary, Rio Bravo marked Howard Hawke's return after a prolonged break, driven by a shift towards character-focused storytelling influenced by the popularity of Western TV shows. The casting decisions, including John Wayne and the unexpected success of Ricky Nelson, played pivotal roles in the film's impact, proving that character-driven narratives could thrive in the Western genre. Angie Dickinson's addition further enriched the ensemble, contributing to the film's success. In Get Shorty, Chili Palmer contrasts the roles in Rio Bravo and El Dorado. Robert Mitchum and Dean Martin both played the inebriated character, a role John Wayne reprised in both films. The film's score features the haunting El Deguelo theme, known as the Cutthroat Song. This ominous tune, linked to General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, also appeared in John Wayne's The Alamo. Ennio Morricone's composition for A Fistful of Dollars echoes Dimitri Tiomkin's Deguelo from Rio Bravo. Footage from the movie was incorporated into flashbacks in John Wayne's last film, The Shootist, portraying him as a younger man, straightforwardly highlighting its impact on subsequent works and the recurring theme in its music, the TV movie holds a lasting influence in cinema.